Thanks. All right, so our next presentation is Get Your Answers In, Presenting Engaging Library Orientations with Quiz Software. And I'm going to pass it over to Elise and Jillian. Take it away. Hi, um, so <laughs> we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Elise Fair. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an instruction and outreach librarian at SUNY Binghamton. Jillian Sandy, she, her, also instruction and outreach librarian <laughs> at Binghamton University. Yeah, so we're going to talk about um, a presentation we did with during our orientation for first year and new transfer students. So let's get started. There we go. Okay, so we had this year the our instruction and outreach team, which is a team of the both of us and a third person who is probably on Zoom with us. Um, we had we were given the opportunity to present during mandatory orientation sessions for new first year and transfer students before classes started. Um, we were told that we would be given a total of 12 one hour sessions um, over four days and to expect 200 to 250 students to attend each session. So we would really get to see all about 3,000 new students, which would be great for us. So we knew this was a great opportunity, but we also knew it would be a challenge to engage these students. So we're going to talk about, you know, what we did to do that and, and how it went too. So when we started to talk about this, we began by setting some goals for these sessions. We wanted to familiarize students with our library website. We wanted to introduce students to librarians ourselves as instruction and outreach librarians, but also subject librarians and other forward-facing folks within our libraries. Um, and then we also wanted to have a little fun to show that we and our libraries are approachable. We're a place for them. Um, I'd also like to note here that we chose, because we had an hour session, we chose to reach out to our university tutorial services who um, do all the tutoring and um, kind of that academic support on campus. We chose to reach out to them to, pre to present alongside us. So we split up a session and they spent the second half hour talking about tutoring services at the university. All right, but before we dive in, we would like to hear from you. So we created a Padlet for you to use to tell us how you have engaged large numbers of students. We are always looking for ideas. We're always curious about what folks are doing. So to join this Padlet, um, Elise has kindly um, dropped that link into the chat. There's also QR code if um, you wanna scan a device or scan that code with your device. So let's give you just a minute or two to add some ideas to Padlet. You will see two columns on our Padlet. One tells you how to use it. Um, there's a plus sign to add a new post. You can add a comment. If images, GIFs, or what have you help tell your story, you can also add those. So let's see what we got. Oh, and then our, our first response is Padlet. <laughs> okay, yeah, Kahoot. Yes. Seeing lots of Kahoot, Padlet, Nearpod. I don't think I know that one. I'm going to have to investigate. Mentimeter, Google Docs, Polls. Yep, Padlet. Okay, sure. Jamboard, Poll Everywhere, Picker Wheel. I'm interested in, is that an actual site or like you've used an actual spinner wheel? I'm, I'm very curious about this session now. Okay, great. I'm seeing lots of creative ideas, which is very helpful. So thank you. Um, let's share our solution. Um, so at least if you would go to the next slide, please. All right, our solution was what we called Library 101. This was created with quizzes, which is a um, free presentation software. You can make things interactive. To me, it's very much like Kahoot, but our advantage was the free version has a much higher participant limit since we were expecting two to 300 folks. 
Um, I think Kahoot is a very low <laughs> limit. I think it's maybe 10 or 20 even. And then in quizzes, we found you, you could have 500 people in a session. So much more appropriate for our needs in this situation. Um, oh, next slide, please. All right, so how exactly did the session go? You may be asking yourself or asking us. So let's outline what exactly the session was and what the technology setup was to enable this. So for the session, first, the librarians introduced themselves. One thing that's a little wonky, I should note that I actually designed a lot of our quizzes presentation <laughs> and then my colleagues, Elise and Megan, presented it um, because of the way the, the timing and absences worked out. <laughs> so they introduced themselves, shared what the purpose of a librarian's role is and what the purpose of the session was, how it would go. They helped students set up their devices with quizzes. They invited them to form groups or work individually if they preferred and had their own device. And then if possible, another student in the group would open up the library's homepage on a different device. Um, if possible, everyone in the group would, everyone else in the group would do that too. Then it was time for the quiz itself. We did review each answer after the responses had been submitted. And then finally, at the end of the session, we asked students to complete a brief feedback form and used that information to draw prizes from a raffle. So kind of randomly selected winners. The technology that we had in this space, so it was a large lecture hall that had projectors, it did require students to have at least one device per group. And then quizzes itself, similar to Pear Deck, we have a site that we navigate to, and then an automatically generated code that students will type in to join the session. We used automatically generated team names. I think there were three options students could pick from, largely to cut down on time. Um, in quizzes, there is actually a filter that tries to kind of catch um, less classroom friendly language. So that wasn't too much of a concern. And then students would submit their responses. We used all multiple choice uh, with four different options. Because we were using a countdown with time limits, there were bonus points that quizzes automatically gave students if they submitted really quickly. And then Following all those responses being submitted, we had our explanation slides that reviewed our answers. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so what were some of the quizzes features that we found helpful for this session? First, the different content types. We had slides where we presented informational content. There is a poll option that can be used to kind of make sure everything's working and to just check in with students. Um, how are you feeling today? Um, how are things going? Our multiple choice questions were the quiz questions themselves and then the answer explanation slides as well uh, we used. Additionally, some of the features, we use the instructor paste option. There is a student paste option as well, just FYI. Uh, leaderboard as well, adds a little bit of excitement, adds a little competition um, to see your ranking as you submit answers. And then the quizzes generated names, like I said, mostly just to cut back on the time that would involve to come up with team names. Um, next slide, please. All right, and just so you know, we're not on the quizzes payroll. There are some drawbacks um, or some areas for improvement that we might suggest. So first of all, limited accessibility options. I know that's a major concern um, for folks here. So even things like um, alt image text wasn't an option, which I found really surprising. That seems very basic to me. <laughs> Um, but there are actually some good accessibility features um, 
things can be read out loud. Um, they do pay attention to kind of font and contrast and things like that in the format of quizzes. If you have the free version, you or students might run into some advertisements. The music and sound effects are on as a default setting, and some of them are really distracting, <laughs> in my opinion. And this does create a potential barrier. It does require students to have at least um, one device per group um, or to have their own device if they want to work individually. Um, so that is a consideration, certainly. And then the memes, um, again, a default, I don't understand. When students submit a response by default, um, then they'll get a meme, which I, again, very distracting. You have to make sure <laughs> to turn that off if that's not a feature that you enjoy. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So here's an example of more or less what students would see in um, the quizzes question. So what kinds of reservable study rooms are available in Bartle Library? That's our largest library location. We picked these four responses. Things like the font and the colors in the free version, this is what we got. Um, but I think it works pretty well. Um, does anybody have guesses in the chat, one, two, three, or four, what kind of reservable study rooms we might have available? Yes. <laughs> That's seeing lots of twos. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I know. Three would be so great. I really would like to have an Art Deco uh, study room, but... Yes, um, individual and group study rooms is what we got. <laughs> um, uh, next slide, please. And this is our answer explanation slide. We took some time to respond, um, tell students what the correct answer was, as well as, so in this example, how do you actually do this? So it's great to know there's a study room, but how are you going to interact with that? How are you going to reserve that if you want to use it? <laughs> Important. Um, and you might be able to anticipate this next part. Um, so next slide, please. We've given you an example. So turn it over to Elise. <laughs> yeah, so let's um, let's play along. Let me see. Let me open up. I believe I have it. Sorry, I've got to navigate my... Um, there we go. Okay, so let, I'm going to start a live session. This is the back end. So when we were doing this live, what I would actually do is get this all queued up before students came in. And again, kind of like Pear Deck, you have joinmyquiz.com and then a game code. So I would actually write that on because there were large blackboards in the room. I would write those on blackboards. So even once we started, students could see those. And then I would also write our library website. So go ahead and join. Um, and we'll go, we'll run through at least one question. And there's also a fun, uh, fun thing at the end that we would do with students, which is something I think they really liked. Um, or I, at least I liked. Um, so let's see, we'll wait for a few more folks to join. And um, actually, let me see if I can put this in the chat. Oh, maybe I won't. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start. And yeah, and it is at the bottom as well. So, okay, so we have our how to play. Again, some of the things we talked about. And like we were talking about, here is the sounds. So hopefully you can see on your device the question. And as we talked about, there was a timer. So one of the things we actually did as we started doing this is I started decreasing the time of the timer as we went through our first and second sessions. But what you can also do is you can, if you're still waiting for folks to put their, I don't know why I'm getting this, I don't need to see all the features right now, excuse me. You can also say, okay, I'm, I'm done. Cause we would get students who wouldn't answer and then be just waiting and waiting. So, I can end it early and yeah. So wait, oh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's go forward, sorry. Let's just do one more. 
just so you can get a sense. And this might be our study room question. Okay. So, you know, we'd ask questions like this. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll type the code in the chat for you. Five, nine, two. So oftentimes when we were doing this, we would, you know, try to talk about the question without giving the answer. But, you know, once folks had answered and shown, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and end the question. So it'll show all done. And it would give, yeah, our leaderboard that Jillian talked about. So students would be able to see, you know, where they were on the board. And then, you know, we could see, okay, yeah, most of you said 10 p.m. Oh, actually, it's 5 p.m. because our classes hadn't started yet. But, you know, you get the idea. And then I want to go ahead, see, go ahead to the very end. So this is something, so as an incentive to get participation, we would give folks a raffle at the end. And there's actually a really fun way to do this. This little um, red button at the bottom that allows you to spin a wheel. And what we would do is we would wait for students to answer our um, assessment survey at the end or feedback survey at the end. And then we'd spin our wheel and pick actually three winners. So this was, you know, the fun part. And students actually really liked this, this spinner wheel concept. So um, let's, go, let's go back to our slides. Thank you for playing along because there's a few more things we want to show. Um, so I want to talk here about the exit survey. So one of the things that we did at the end is we did have a um, survey for students. And in order to spin that wheel, we waited till we got a certain number of survey responses. So that was the incentive to get to the spinning of the wheel and giving out of prizes. Um, our prizes were, we basically put together some library swag and candy and put it in a nice like um, kind of cellophane wrapped up. So it looked kind of like a present, like a, and we put it in BU colors of, you know, green and white and things like that. So our exit survey, we asked two questions. It was very short um, and they were free response questions. We asked, um, let's say a friend missed this. What are the, some of the key points you would tell them? And we actually had, a, not surprising, a large number of responses because we did encourage students to respond to this before giving out those, those, um, those uh, prizes. So um, I used actually Voyant tool to analyze these responses. So some of the top words that we saw mentioned or I saw mentioned were not surprising, library, libraries, librarians. And there were really too many here to see a trend. But after that, the top terms were resources, help, books, subject, and study. And some of the trends that came out of those were, um, were students mentioning how libraries and librarians could help, students mentioning that they could check out 100 books so that they learned in the session, oh, I can check out 100 books. Um, they learned that they could access and search for books. Um, they also, I learned, some of them commented, but we do have more than books at the libraries, which is good. It's something we mentioned. Um, they also mentioned sub subject librarians, subject guides, or questions about both, and um, also help provided no matter what subject they were studying. And then, of course, you know, you saw our study room question, so it was mention of study rooms, study spaces, resources for studying, and then areas of study in terms of subject. And then the second question we asked were, was, you know, what would help today's session be more effective? What would make today's session more effective? And some of the top words that came out of this were time, question, inf information, library, effective. And some of the trends associated to these were they wanted um, less time or more time to answer a question, which was a continual struggle for us as we were giving the session because some students would answer really quickly and then we would wait. They also wanted more time explaining using how to use quizzes um, and then also the answers, which I found really interesting because I felt like we gave pretty good in um, explanations, but you know, maybe we can elaborate that on that for next time. Some wanted a later start time, and frankly, I did too, because we had some nine o'clock sessions, especially on Sunday morning. That was a little, it's a little rough, but we didn't choose that time. Um, some wanted fewer or more questions. At least one person noted they wanted more difficult questions, and I was like, really? Okay, you're, you want a challenge. Um, 
and some somewhat in a presentation before we started answering questions. So that might be something we think about for the future. Um, they also commented they wanted more or better information, a contact info, copies of information shared, so giving handouts or slides. Um, some wanted pictures or maps of our libraries. And um, but there were also people who responded that the presentation was effective, which I thought was great. Um, great to see. So from this feedback and during the session, we noticed the students liked the spinner wheel. They liked the prizes, obviously. Um, they liked seeing our librarian cats because there was a slide where we had uh, one of our one of our lovely librarian cats. Well, cats are not in the library, but cats that live with us. And um, there were comments that the session was engaging and effective, which was good because that's what we were going for. Um, folks generally did not like how large the audience was. We didn't, unfortunately, have a choice on that. Um, some wanted a presentation, some wanted us to use Kahoot instead, so we might look into that in the future. Um, again, people wanted handouts and maps of our locations, um, and some found, some people found it hard to look at the website to answer questions, which is, can be true because it's hard to look at our website on your phone. Um, so from our perspective, we thought, you know, the questions were good, the topics were good, um, some things, you know, after our first or second session, we started shortening the response time to kind of um, take away the time that we would have to kind of fill space as people answered. Um, we also thought the student participation went well. Uh, one of the things I did after the first session or two is I actually started playing music before, at, before and after the session just to make it a little bit more fun as folks walked in and left. Um, and then the other thing I thought went really well was the partnership with the, the university, university tutorial services. So it, it was a great way for us to make a connection to that office, but then also like show two resources that help students during one time. And frankly, an hour was too much time for us to fill. Um, what didn't go well is our, we initially actually had too many questions. So after the first and second, first or second session, we went in and edited some questions out. So, you know, move the questions that we thought most important to the top. Um, we probably could have used more time to practice. We didn't really practice this when the first session was a little rough. Um, the time, again, the time needed to answer, especially the first session, the students did not focus. Um, we had, there was some, you know, just excitement of being on college campus for the first time, especially after, you know, the last two years of, of all of this. Um, and then the biggest problem we had is that students didn't come and we didn't have any, any, um, real control over this. Um, since it was ori the orientation folks who were um, putting these sessions on and responsible for getting students to sessions. They were responsible with communicating to students about the sessions. So we we couldn't do anything about that. Um, but we unfortunately did not reach 3,000 students. We probably reached about five to 600 students out of this, which is still a pretty good group of students to be able to see. So um, just quickly, some of our, I know we're getting close to time, some of our changes for next time, I think we're thinking about potentially putting a brief presentation in at the beginning and then maybe questions after that. Um, the other thing is, so as Jillian said, she um, was not available to give these presentations. There were 12 altogether over four days. Um, Megan and I were at every single session. And that was probably too much. You really only needed one person could do this after, you know, you learned how to do it. So if we're doing this again, we're going to look to space this out. So um, because basically what it ended up being is a couple 12 hour days. And one of those was a Saturday because we had sessions at nine o'clock in the morning and at 7 p.m. at night. So it ended up being a very long time for us to to do this. So we're definitely going to split this up in the future. And the other thing, you know, we're always thinking about ways to add more engagement. So that kind of leads us to the end. Are there any questions right now that we can answer? I know our, our time is really short. I can also go back to, well, I'll put our, also put our um, email in the chat in case y'all need it. Oh, there's okay. a question and in the chat. In and miss beginning of presentation. Yes. Um, 
So there were students who would wander in. And that's part of the reason that I would write the um, website they would go to and the enter code. And we did use the software we did use was quizzes. Thanks, Jocelyn. She put it in the chat. So we would have students entering after and because that's the nature of orientation. So as those students would enter, I would often, you know, say if I was presenting, I'd say, hey, welcome. You can join us by following, you know, navigating to this website and then using this code to join. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, we did have things non-traditional. Ah, we didn't, you know what, in this, in our orientation, we didn't see that many non-traditional students. We did have um, transfer students, but our orientation session was mainly targeted at folks who were really traditional students who are living on campus. Um, I think in the future, if we were going to do something with non-traditional students, we'd probably think a little bit differently about, um, about uh, do something do something differently with technology so Jillian is there anything else you want to say anything else I missed um no I don't think so um I mean we're happy to answer questions but I feel I know we're at covered time, it. so <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much um we we hope this is interesting and helpful to folks Thank you both. Uh, I just had a quick question. Has the library always been involved in the orientation program for students? Uh, no. So this no. Was this was thing. this was the first year. Well, so we've been involved in the past in terms of doing things like tabling and um, making our space available. But this is the first time we were asked to participate in like a two orientation program. Great. Thank you. Thank you.